Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Stephen Boyle. I am the program director for the Diploma in Advanced Management Performance. And this morning isn't, um, isn't going to be a very formal session. Instead, I'm joined this today by two alumni of the diploma, Christine Cullen, who's the managing director of CRIF VisionNet, a business information and credit solutions company, a global company. And also by David Campbell, who is the executive vice president for technical at GCAS, a global aviation finance and leasing company. Um, so the format this morning is going to be um, very much kind of the fireside chat, but without the fireside, we're not quite at that weather yet. Uh, we're going to have um, a few questions for the panelists, a little bit of discussion that I, I hope will help participants, help attendees to understand a bit, a bit more about the experience on the program. You're also very welcome to pose questions for the panel and for myself into the chat. And at the end of our discussion, our q and I'll be inviting Maria Keeney, who is with us, she's just uh, off camera at the moment, who is our business development manager, to share a little bit more of the practicalities information about the program. Um, I'm going to kick off with a question for both our panelists, but we we'll start with you, Christine. What made you choose the Diploma in Advanced Management Performance? Oh, good. good morning, everybody. Um, but I think what appealed to me um, about the this particular diploma and starting with this one is it was very broad and general. And I thought, as someone who was returning to study, I was looking for something a little bit different. And I thought this would be a good introduction into it because it touches on every possible area that you might need um, to improve a kind of in the area of business management. You, you have a marketing strategy, the decision making, personal impact, profitability. And I just like the very general nature of it. And it just really all of the touch points that were covered in the various modules uh, resonated with areas of the business that I wanted to look at and improve you know, my skills in. OK, thanks, Christine. David, how about you? What was the reason for your choice? Yeah, I, th I think, well, good morning, everyone. And, and I suppose some similar themes to what Christine had mentioned, but this was my second diploma, having started and done the business finance one. And when I did the business finance diploma, I, I hadn't particularly decided on whether to proceed with, with the MSc. And, and then I, I decided to go down that path. And, and I suppose similar to Christine, I thought I, I wanted returning to education after a period of time. I wanted a broad-based uh, diploma as part of the of the overall masters and I thought that this really provided the foundation for me um, so similar to Christine I mean just thought it was really useful in terms of you know strategy and execution market position so I just thought those are really nice themes through and in fact that broad base then really helped me to decide then what I was going to do after as my third diploma so it, it just gives you a nice taster uh, and I think it's really useful across your day-to-day -day business. OK, because the way we have our, our program structured here, for those who are attending who don't know, um, is that diplomas like this can be taken on a standalone basis. But uh, many of our, our uh, clients like to come along and take a second diploma and then a third diploma. And if you take three, it converts into a master's degree. Um, in fact, um, warning for those who didn't know this, um, it seems that our programs are quite addictive. And I think more than, I think Maria will have the statistic, but I think that more than 70% of our participants go on to complete three diplomas and, and do the masters in that way. And of course you learn from each other um, a little bit more about what diplomas give you, what skills and so on. Um, David, what did you find to be the most enjoyable aspects of the program for you? Yeah, I suppose two, two things for me. One is that, you, you know, I've, I've been working in, in, in GCAS for, you know, nigh on 20 years and the opportunity to meet people from different businesses and different industries was just, you know, really interesting. And time in the breakout rooms with, with people or time, you know, having lunch or on breaks and just learning what other people do uh, to make a living was just really fascinating and the way they think about making decisions and how they do business. And the second thing I thought was useful is, you know, the, the assignments that we do throughout the module, uh, you know, a considerable part of it is, is kind of your reflection on what you've learned and your application of those learnings to your own, your own life and your own business. And, 
And, uh, you know, that can be a bit of a challenge, but it's also very interesting to sort of step back and, and say, well, okay, I've been part of this business for a long time, but actually I've never really thought about it from this angle or this angle. And I just thought that that opportunity was, was, was really enjoyable. Okay, that's interesting. And, and that's something we might come back to a little bit later, because for me, certainly as an educator, the most important and the most enjoyable aspect of, of teaching, of being a part of these programs, is, is learning how different participants take the materials and apply them very practically in their, in their roles, in, in their companies, or in their career choices. Um, Christine, for yourself, what were the, the most enjoyable parts of the program? I, I think I'd echo what um, David said there. I really enjoyed more than I thought meeting all of the other people. And, you know, uh, we had this common journey that we were going on together and we, we had the breakout rooms and most of the course was in person. So it was lovely to get to meet them and hear their reflections um, of what they thought about it. And again, just see what different people were doing. That was fascinating, you know, because you don't really get to meet such a wide variety of people. So that was definitely really enjoyable. I look forward to coming in and hearing what they thought about the lectures, what they thought about the assignments. That was a really, really good part of it. Um, another thing that I found was enjoyable was what I learned. I loved learning new ways and challenging the way I thought about things because, you know, it's similar to what David said, when you've been operating in a business for 20 plus years, you kind of know a lot, but it's only when you start to get a different perspective on things you realize, um, you know, that you know that new things are changing all the time. And especially in business today, it's all about change. It's all about how we're responding and how we're helping, guiding people in a business through change. Everything is about change. And I loved learning new ideas and new changes and that they were in every module um, and taking those new reflections. So I really enjoyed that. I didn't think I would be challenged as much as I was in, in my belief system on things, you know? So I, I enjoyed that. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and I'm glad that we provided that, that kind of challenge. I'm reminded of a, a participant in the program several years ago who was actually quite shocked by that, who said that um, I feel like I was coming to the zoo yeah. and I saw a completely new animal I didn't even know existed. Um, Okay, so, you know, it, there, there are definitely positives to the program, but um, also we could say no pain, no gain. Um, so if not pain, um, Christine, what would you say were the most challenging aspects of the program? And also on the plus side, how did you meet that challenge? I think the first most challenging thing, if somebody's starting out on this, I started out with this and a lot of people, you know, people have different, just speaking to other participants, uh, people decide on this diploma sometimes at the end of, of, a, of a, the Masters, uh, as we were discussing there. I started out with it um, and I think that was a great decision for me either way, you know, um, but, it, you know, getting used to the assignments and understanding when you've got your, you know, when you've got you've gone through a weekend, which can be, you know, it can be challenging because you're thinking, you're concentrating and you're back doing it again. It's at the end of a working week as well. And then you're going into an assignment. And if you haven't been in education for a while, it can be a little daunting the first time. But I think you get into the rhythm of it very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, how, how I was going to construct that assignment, academic writing, if you like, how to formulate what was in my mind, put it on paper. Um, for me, it was going underneath the word count. I know for other um, participants, it was, you know, trying to meet the word count, but, you know, um, trying to be concise, for example. So, you know, getting those assignments, so that was definitely something that I had to get used to. Um, and the reading, the, the, the post-course and pre-course reading, that sort of thing, you know. But um, I think once you do one, in my experience, once you do one, you get into the rhythm of it and you find out what works for you. Um, and what worked for me, um, I learned maybe after the second module is to take it in maybe half an hour after the end of each day and write down just a few reflections and thoughts, almost like if I could describe it like a brain dump, just this is just what, you know, I thought about today, because when I went back to look at the readings that we were given, I could think about my initial thought and sometimes um, the journey of how my thought had changed or evolved or developed, because a lot of the 
post-work material we were doing was about how we would apply it. And I, you know, I found that, you know, obviously very useful, but sometimes it's good to have your initial perspective and, and then if it had changed or, or otherwise. So I think maybe taking a few notes immediately afterwards, just whatever is in your mind, whatever you want to read. If someone said something, you thought, well, I might look into that later for the assignment. Um, so that, that's one bit of advice, I think, or one challenge, how I met one challenge. And the other thing is to, if you have a theme, usually for the assignments, you apply it to a work or a personal scenario. You have choice um, often. And I think in the first week after an assignment, I would say what helped me is to think about what it was I was going to write about. I didn't have to know what exactly I was going to write about, but think about what theme I was going to anchor my assignment on. And, and from then, just day to day, doing about work, kids, whatever else I was doing, I would develop a thought, you know, some reflections on it as I went forward, you know. So I think having the anchor of what you're going to, what topic you're going to explore is useful because it comes to you as you're going about your day to day work, home, whatever. So okay. that's what I would say. Okay. You know, and I was also thinking about that, that experience you had of, of, you know, at first finding the writing of assignments a bit daunting. Mm. And certainly that, that's a very, very common experience for anyone taking their diploma and perhaps it's their first step back into education for years or decades. And, um, you know, there are, for starters, I think generally once people have written one, they say, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, and additionally, we provide, um, as a parallel to the program, we actually provide writing workshops, very concise, simple writing workshops and other resources uh, to guide people who are not so, so, um, so comfortable with the experience. Um, also, you know, we're, we're not necessarily, for the most part, interested in people producing very um, worthy academic tracts. We want people to reflect in, in a realistic kind of journal-like way about their experiences, typically. Um, David, for you, what were the most challenging aspects of the program and how did you meet those challenges? I, th I think there's probably two things that, that come to mind and one is on the assignments, just like Christine said, and it's, it's funny, I had a lot of the same techniques. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't reflect straight after the, the, you know, the, the day's course, but on the Monday or Tuesday following, I would try and block an hour and, and try and pick out what were the highlights of the key learnings for me in the, in the weekend. And I'd look at the assignment again and just jot down, here are the three or four or five points I'm going to try and get down the assignment. Well, it's relatively fresh because I, I think if you left it until the week before it was due or the couple of days before, it would have been a bit of a struggle. I think it's better to at least get your get your direction mm -hmm. early. And I think the second thing then uh, that, that was hard is, you know, particularly the last module that you give, Stephen, and some of the other ones, you, you do have to reflect on how you do things personally and, you know, how you structure your life or how, how you would approach a certain thing. And I think... Uh, you kind of have to be be honest with yourself or else you won't get the value out of it. And, and that can be tough, you know, to, to sort of strip away that, that force field we all have around ourselves and, and try and be honest, because that's where you're going to get some value out of this, is, you know. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that, I, I think that's a challenge that a lot of people can identify with. David, how did you address that challenge, get beyond that kind of resistance to delving deep? You know, what I thought was really useful, Stephen, and, and you'll remember there was uh, a reading around uh, uh, Porig Okeji in, in, in Er Aran. And that reading is quite interesting. And I'm, I've, I've met him once or twice through, through business. But, I mean, what's really interesting about that reading is that it's not about his, his life in business. It's about his life. And, and I just sort of thought, well, I mean, if he, could, if he can do a, a Harvard Business Review paper about himself, then you know, I can, I can think honestly about my life. And I just thought that was really interesting. And it just sort of allowed me to think more broadly about, you know, family and kids and holidays and how that all fits into my overall life. But I just, I was kind of inspired is the wrong word, but I just felt a little bit uh, more open after reading it that, you know, he could have an article like that with his okay. life. And it's not very positive overall. You know, it's a, it's a broad look at his life and it's really good. It, it, it's honest, yeah. Yeah, honest, um, yeah. And for me, that brings me to something that I would say is generally true of the experience, the classroom experience. And it was also true when we were online as well, you know, in a virtual environment, but particularly in the classroom, that there's a very confidential and comfortable, but honest environment. Mm -hmm. um, 
where participants do feel comfortable to share of themselves and of their not just superficially about their experiences, but how they coped with those and what were the personal challenges and how to overcome those. Um, I'd like to come to there's a, a couple of questions have popped up in the chat that I think are, are good practical questions. Um, the first one I'm going to answer myself directly. Um, uh, someone's asked, can I give an example of one of the, the assignments? Absolutely. The assignment there that David was just referring to is an assignment that I give in the, the final module, the final weekend of the diploma. That particular module is actually about um, focusing on one's own sense and strength of purpose and building one's ability to be present and focused in the moment, in the, worst, in the workplace, to do one's absolute best, to perform at your best. And then also about harnessing what you've learned in that module and the other modules, come up with a plan for what you want to achieve. And the assignment for that, maybe it's a little bit different to some of the others, but I'll explain the link. It's really to just reflect on what you've learned and to write a reflection about um, how the tools and readings and, for example, case studies like the Porigo Katie case study have, have what they've taught you. Now, in other modules, the assignments will often be asking you to apply the materials to a specific business task. So, for example, I do teach half a session on one of the other modules in the program. I teach a day on decision making, and one of my colleagues teaches a day on applying tools for motivation and feedback to make sure that decisions are well implemented. And we have a shared assignment in which I ask a couple of reflective questions about how you could apply the decision-making tools in the workplace or to your life personally. And my colleague asks similar questions about the tools for feedback and motivation. So they're very practical. Um, they're not terribly long either. Typically, uh, you're asked to maybe hit a word count of, you know, it would be um, a few typed pages, like maybe between four and eight or five and 10 typed pages with double one and a half line spacing, that kind of thing. Um, Christine commented earlier that she actually found it harder to stay within the, the word count. And I say that's more common than people finding that, oh, it's too much to write. And then, um, there's another question here, and I'm going to pass it back to the participants. Could you give a realistic assessment of the time commitment in addition to the lectures? So, um, Christine, how about you? What, what did you find? You're clearly, you're very busy. We're both very busy people. What did you find was the time commitment required aside from the weekends, the, the Friday and Saturday attendance? Um, sometimes there'd be pre-reading on the modules um, and sometimes there'd be, you know, post-reading, obviously, to reflect back and, we, we, you know, so it, it can vary from module to module. Um, I found um, there's certainly a little bit of prep before the module just to, you know, have a look at it. If there's pre-reading or a pre-assignment before the module, um, and I'm, I'm not sure whether there's too many in there, but sometimes there is a bit of a, a reflection so that can take, you know, it depends on, on the content and how heavy the articles are in terms of, um, yeah, the, the content and word count. Generally, a lot of the reading would be around, it's very accessible is what I found, really, really well written. I mean, for example, a Harvard Business Review is used quite a lot and, and they have a lovely way of transmitting a message in a very, you know, um, it's just very, very digestible format and very relatable. So I really enjoy reading those articles. So. Um, it depends on, you know, it depends, some are more, some are less, but there's certainly, of, um, there's certainly, uh, it's hard to say, I'd say that I think there's guidelines in the program to say this is the amount of hours you're going to need to spend, and they give you a guideline. Personally speaking, I, I found I could get it done underneath that guideline. Uh, I'm a fast reader anyway, fast reader, fast talker. Um, so it depends. And then sometimes I might want to read a little bit further into subject. So I like the way that you, I think you can still construct, you know, a reflection or a journal or an assignment, you know, and read as much of something required or as little. It will show in the assignment what you do, but this is very much something with yourself driving anyway. 
So it's not really about, it's about, you know, you getting an understanding of the concept. So if you're particularly uh, interested in one area of the concept, you might read into it a little deeper. So I think it's a little bit of self-management, if I could say that. I'm not, I'm not sure whether it's really answering the question. The assignment, if you, I would say, you know, the, the assignment can take anywhere from eight hours to, you know, eight to ten hours over a period of, of um, you know, in terms of constructing it, because I would write a lot, then I try and make it concise, then I try and make it respectable. <laughs> and then I try and make it something that I could submit, but other people might have a different strategy, they might write, you know, a paragraph. And, and so I think it's very personal. So I would say to any participants, in summary, don't be scared about it. Uh, you don't have to read, and I hope Stephen doesn't get out to me, but you don't have to read every single thing sent. Um, you know, read what you're interested in, make sure it covers what you're being asked, um, because sometimes you can be, be given books in some of the assignments, you know, uh, and then, you know, you can reflect on them later. That, that's what I would say, but certainly read that there's required readings, suggested readings, and then there's sort of mandatory readings. So you can take it as little or as deep as you like into a topic. Right. I hope that helps. Um, no, I, th I, think, I think that does help. Um, David, can you recall... Um, uh your your time commitment say for a complete diploma so what for each module how's it spread out and what would your week look like yeah the, the way i used to structure it was uh i would try and get a couple of hours normally on a friday maybe two or three hours done and then saturday morning i would spend three or four hours as well um on the assignments and normally i would say i might do that for two or three weekends after the the actual lecture weekend so i'm guessing between 10 and 20 hours for for the um for the for the you know the assignment um the pre-reading you know as as christine said it, it's quite variable i think even between the different modules some had some had a lot more and some had less some had assignments but they're relatively modest if i remember so maybe there's i don't know 10 hours or something to do it, it just really depends mm -hmm. but what I, but what i found is you got better at the reading you became a little bit more structured about how you did it. I mean, what I learned was that you read the article and then you went back and you, you again tried to write some notes. So as you got closer to the weekend, I would be able to just quickly read through my notes and I wouldn't have to read through the whole the whole uh, reading again. And obviously the case studies um, are used a lot during the weekends themselves, so they probably merit maybe maybe closer examination so look I, I always say to people and you know a couple of my colleagues here have gone, gone to do courses in UCD it's it's not the sort of horror story you hear about MBAs and people are up all night and all that it's, mm. it's not like that it is manageable within a, you know a, a busy work week it's quite manageable um, okay yeah. okay okay um, I, I, I think that's a fair a fair kind of assessment um, from from uh, from both of our panelists, you know, I can uh, tell people you know, there is there is a requirement. There are required readings and there are some assignments, but we've designed the program to be very manageable for very very busy people. And I think you know David gave an example of how he would how he would have have broken it down. Different people do it differently, and as Christine has said. You know, there's not an expectation that you've memorized everything. There isn't going to be, you know, suddenly a volley of of accusations or blame or anything like that. It's it's not like that. It's very much you're as as Christine said, you're doing it for yourself. So yeah. typically, often people find that they almost kind of overdo it themselves just because of their interest, their enthusiasm. Um, getting to the, the pointy end of things, the sharp end of things, um, David. Um, you know, we've we've talked about you know, say assignments, for example, but also the classroom materials having practical business application. And I've also talked about the the, the way in which some of the material is very personal. Um, would you be able to think of some examples, some specific examples, without giving anything confidential away, of what for you were the most valuable takeaways from the program in terms of either personally or in terms of your practical business applications? Yeah, I mean, look, a, a couple of things from, from, from me, you know, I think within business, and I'm, I'm an engineer by training, so also within the technical area, people tend to be a bit bamboozled by terms, and I think can be can be put off by terms. And I think what I, you know, one of the biggest 
takeaways from from the course because it's so broad as you do learn a lot of these terms and you learn exactly what they mean and don't mean and i think it can be quite disarming then you know in that okay well I, I know what that person means and actually it's not that scary so that was that was a really good uh thing for me i also really enjoyed uh, and you mentioned it earlier Stephen, the you know decision making i mean we make a lot of decisions in our business and we have a great structure for doing it but i'd never actually sat back and thought about how it was designed and and whether it was good or not good but it, it certainly taught me to think more about okay, we have a great decision-making process, but how could we make it better? Or what could I ask for to, to make a better decision? Um, the second thing I thought was really good was, you know, how is your business differentiating, differentiating itself amongst competitors? You know, and what, what, what drives those differentiators? How do, you, how do you strengthen those? How do you maintain those? Uh, because so often we're in a business and we're just, you know, we're meeting our quarterly targets or monthly targets and we don't really step back and think, well, actually, in the bigger picture, what do we do that's different to the other guys? And, and then I suppose finally, just, you know, your own personal impact, how you work, how you show up, how other people look at you. I think it's, it's pretty valuable to spend some time and think about that and, um, you know, the difference you can make personally. Okay, thanks. Thanks, David. Um... Yeah, it's interesting to for me to often to hear about what which parts of the program really stick with them and 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 gel in there. And I think the experience is 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 different for many. But actually, one of the the first things you spoke about that comes out really commonly is is learning the language of different disciplines, especially when you work in a cross-functional setting or there's buzzwords or you work in a multinational environment, you come across different organizations. Um, in fact, one of the activities we tend to do on the very first day we're all together is I, I ask participants to, to just kind of brainstorm in small groups, what are your objectives? And that always comes out as an objective for many people to to you know, expand their repertoire, expand their vocabulary of business, their understanding of different concepts. Um, Christine, how about you in terms of, of valuable takeaways, either personally or for practical business application? It's funny, just listening there to, to David, it, uh, it's interesting that I would actually agree with it, uh, some of his, what he has said is there in terms of what I found personally viable. Um, the decision making, I make decisions and we make decisions here all the time. But the module we did around decision making, that is fascinating. It's it's really fascinating. And for the assignment in that, I took something, uh, you could take something uh, from a work environment or something um, from a personal environment. environment. And it's, it was very, very interesting to kind of map it out. Um, so that was, that was really impactful, I would say. Um, I also really enjoyed the marketing one because... Uh, it's just it's very very uh, relatable because uh, we're in an online business um so uh, you know and it's a highly competitive area as well and, and a lot of different functions and it's just really really interesting to look at the marketing aspect uh, so i found that very very interesting um and very useful as well and then again i would agree the personal impact how others see you and you know, presence and all of that sort of thing, I and mean, the influence that you might may have on. I thought I thought that's very very useful, um, and it's a nice wrap to, um, it's a nice wrap to the diploma as well. It is a challenging one because, as David um, sort of mentioned earlier on, it does require a little bit of self reflection, and I don't know, it, you know, that's a kind of a little awkward, and it's a little what do we have to really, what? you know, as he said, the force field. I could relate to that as well. So I found those ones that they were the most um, impactful ones that uh, really stayed with me. Uh, you know, all of them are great, but I, those those they were the ones that I, I really thought were very very useful. You know, and I was able to put them straight into practice. And still am today. I still remember. Yeah, you know, we did that, or I can see this is how this is going, or you know, okay. it's very relatable. Okay, and and through that experience, I mean, aside from what you learned from the program and from the part, the other participants and so on. Um, was there anything you learned about yourself when you went through this process? My goodness, so much. <laughs> if that question was directed at me. Um, yes, yeah, so much. Um, I think what it does is um, 
Yeah, I think it makes you much more conscious of any um, unconscious bias, for example, you might have, you know, and it challenges those perceptions. And I would have thought that I wouldn't have needed to look at that. I would have thought I'd been quite very open minded, very. And you are. But, you know, sometimes we have this, you know, you might have a bias. This person is doing this because of this. But really what it does is gives you the tools to challenge perceptions. And, and then that's really helpful as someone in a kind of a management or leadership role, because you can help other people challenge their perceptions. And that can really, you know, and, and it can help bring a team along. So I think that is something um, that I, I, I continually now from this module uh, challenge perceptions and I stop before I make a, a thought on something and I challenge what I'm thinking. So I have this inner voice all the time, purely from the module thinking, hang on, is this happening because of this? Is this person reacting because of that? Is this not working because it's, it's you know, the perception is a different. So I think that's something. Um, so I've learned to challenge thinking um, and it's give, it has also given me a really deeper understanding of people, um, of why we do things myself and the people around me and, and how my impact how I relate to them. Um, and sometimes you're doing things and you don't realize that they're good or bad, you're just doing them intuitively because a lot of people, um, I think, you know, arrive in a management position because of intuitiveness, if you like. But when you see why you do things, it makes you work on areas a little bit more as well. So I think that was good. You think, oh, I, I, I didn't know that was a thing. You, you sort of do it intuitively. When you're looking at it in an academic setting and looking at a case study, you're thinking, ah, OK, this is something I can improve in this area. So I found I found those things very interesting, if that, if that answers your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that sounds like you, you learned quite a few things about yourself in terms of personal development. Mm. And David, can I put the same question to you? In terms of you know, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of sim yeah, I think a lot of similar stuff to what Christine said. I mean, look, I think one of the things you learn about yourself is that you're not you're not that bad. You know, a lot of what you do is is right. You may not you may not always understand why it's right, but you you do get a lot of affirmation about how you go about things. And the other thing I, I find really useful, and it's not just from the the content in the module, but from the people you meet, you learn a lot about how other people do things as well, and you know, you get a lot of tips about how other people might think about things and to Christine's point that that really makes you pause maybe and consider well how are these other people that I'm dealing with how are they thinking about this problem because they're not necessarily thinking about it the way I did or the way I do and I think that that's quite useful um, because I think when you work in a particular company in a particular area a lot of the people do think the same way whereas in this module you'll be dealing with people who work in all sorts of different areas and they don't think the same way um, so that's really quite interesting, um, because what you learn is that even the people in your own company who often come to the same conclusion, they're probably not on the same wavelength as you all the time either, and I think that's quite useful. Okay, okay. My final question for the panelists um, is, and I'll put it to you first there, David, what advice would you give to someone who's um, participating in the, in the webinar this morning, who's thinking that they might sign up for the programme? Look, I mean, I, I would I would just recommend the program. I find it really useful in terms of, as I mentioned earlier, providing that broad um, outline of maybe as part of your further masters or to tease you out in terms of where you want to go next. And the other advice I would give is just when, you know, when you do go on the program and you're doing your assignments, you know, don't leave them till the last minute because I think you won't get all the value that you really should get out of them. So I would say attack them early while, while everything's fresh in your mind and at least have the outline of your assignment written down just in just in you know high level bullet points and then if you want you know if you want to go on and do it then over a number of weeks that's fine but you know I, I, I think get it when it's fresh and don't leave it till the last minute because you know that the assignments are really for you they're not for they're not for you Stephen they're, they're for me you know to learn and write down what you've what you've learned and I think if you leave them at the end and you rush them you're, you're probably not getting 100 percent out of it sure sure um Christine any advice? I agree. Yeah, I agree with what David said there. Get the assignments, get a broad outline of what, what you've done, because they can make it, if you leave them to the last minute, it can just make it very sort of a little bit stress, more stressful than it needs to be. And you're not getting the full value out of it. And yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd probably, you know, you know, jot them down. Um, for me, I started out with this um, and lots of, you know, I think lots of people do it either as a second or, or perhaps a last if they do decide to go on to do it. I think it's a great one to start out with because um, it touches on lots of the other modules. So if somebody was saying, well, I'm going to try this, it's a great broad one to do. Um, 
but it also gives you a little taster of strategic of some of the other i think there's about 10 in the um sort of suite of diplomas you can do as part of this particular msc if anybody's thinking about that i like this one because it gives you a little taster of you know sales and marketing it might give you a taster of strategic management a little bit of a taster of the coaching and leadership so I think it's good in that respect as well, you know. And um, so I wouldn't, I would encourage people if they're not sure, it's a great one to start out at because I went on to do a second one and um, I'm enrolled for the, the third one now coming up in November. Um, but yeah, I think the assignments are something that should probably put people off. But as someone, as Dave was saying, it's not, it's not like that MBA experience where you people, you hear all these horror stories. It's, it's very, very accessible. Just don't leave them to the last minute because it just makes the thing a little bit more stressful than it needs to be. Um, and yeah, I'd say just do it. It's great. I, 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 the only thing I regret is not doing it earlier, to be honest with you. And that's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. I, I thought it'd be, you know, I thought it'd be more challenging than it was, but you get into the rhythm of it after the first, after the first weekend, you get into the rhythm of it. Okay. That's, that's great. Thanks very much, um, Christine. And thanks, David. Thanks to both our panelists. Um, I, I'm going to take just a, a couple of the questions that are myself that are just practical questions. Um, that have come up, and then I'm going to um, pass back to Maria Kini. Um, Therese Conway has asked, will the dates in November and December be on campus? That is absolutely our intention. And I suppose none of us can really say with 100% certainty what's going to be happening in November or December, uh, December regarding COVID. But, you know, it looks like the whole country is, is intent on reopening. We now have um, plans like we've already actually had some courses back on campus um, and we're uh, university teaching is going to be fully back to the classroom um, this this term right from September so we're extremely hopeful that that will continue right throughout the year and our intention if you sign up is we'll be telling you yes you'll be on campus it won't be a hybrid model that we're offering it won't be you can sit at home and do it via zoom um, it'll be uh, it will be on campus, and then um, another question about the um, the assignments: Are the assignments individual, or are there group assignments as well? Um, most of the assignments are individual. I know that from time to time, um, it, with some of the modules, um, marketing module, for example, sometimes there's a preference to have a group. Uh, a, a small group assignment. Actually, maybe Christine, you could remind me because you were just talking about the marketing module. Was there a group assignment for that? Yeah, you had a choice with that one. If, as I, if I remember correctly, you could do it in a group and you could do it individually. And what I, if I remember well, from our uh, some of the guys um, in in our course did it in twos. Um, I think it was mostly two. There might have been one group of three, and the rest of them did it individually. So it was a mix, 50-50. And then for the rest of the assignments, as far as I recall, they were individual. Um, so that was my recollection. Okay, that, that's super. Thanks very much. Um, and thanks again, Christine and, and David. I'm going to pass you over now to my colleague, Maria Keeney, who's our business development manager, um, who's going to close out the webinar with some, some further practical information. Great, thanks so much, Stephen. I'm just gonna um, share my screen here. And um, so one second. Now, Stephen, can I just check that you can see that? Great. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, a few of the practicalities of the course. Um, and first, can I thank uh, Stephen so much for ho hosting this morning and giving us time. And of course, to Christine and David. I think it's really uh, great when prospective participants get to hear from alum alumni. And of course, the program director um, really gives a sense of the journey and, and what um, is entailed in the Diploma in Advanced Management Performance. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through a few of the practicalities because some of you might have questions around it, but I will follow up with an email and you can get back to me directly if you have any specific questions. So obviously the program le leader is uh, Stephen Boyle, um, who you've heard from this morning. Um, it's starting on the 4th of November to, um, 21. Um, I saw there a question came in just about what dates, um, the full date. So what I will do is I'll send out the full schedule when I'm sending out the email. But I think there was a specific question about the December dates. So they're the 16th and 17th of December are the dates in December. 
So that it's six two day modules. It's run over a Friday and a Saturday each time. And there's about six weeks in between each module. So that's your time really to get your assignment done and do your pre-reading for your next um, module. So as we've spoken about a lot in the webinar today, it's um, through continuous assessment, so assignments. Um, Stephen went through um, the, the type of assignments that you might be given. Um, they mostly are, as we just discussed, their individual assignments. There's just one module, the marketing one, where you have a choice of doing a group assignment if you wish. So this is a standalone diploma. It's accredited by UCD at level nine. So once you finish uh, your diploma, you'll get a professional diploma in advanced management performance. As Stephen mentioned as well in the webinar, it is part of our MSc in Business Leadership and Management um, Practice Pathway. Um, and that is where you can pick three out of our eight diplomas to make up an MSc. So if we start off with the Advanced Management and then you can go and pick uh, whichever is your preference to do as your final two. Um, as Stephen said, actually, most of our participants do end up going on to do um, the MSc. Um, but what we do recommend is just pick your first diploma, take it one step at a time, and then you can take it from there. So the fees are for this diploma are 7,945. We do offer a 5% discount for UCD business alumni. Um, and also, if you decide to go on and do your second diploma, uh, you'll be entitled to this. Um, in terms of the content, so we touched on um, the content. That's your six modules there. So we said this the the um, this particular uh, diploma is really to give you a broad perspective of the business. So not necessarily concentrate on what you do on a day to day basis. Really, to for you to understand what's going on in the overall business and and to know how your actions can affect the rest of the business. So as you see with the six modules, you start off with competitive advantage to operations, then you move on to marketing to stra strategy and um, the decision making module, with it, which is with Stephen Boyle. You run uh, then to project management, then improving business profitability, which is um, finance. And then you finish us off which, with personal impact and presence, which we discussed again in this webinar. And that's again with uh, Stephen Boyle to finish out. Um, so, yeah, and we've also mentioned, so that's a, a nice picture of our campus in Black Rock. That's actually the Smurfit Executive Building there that you're looking at. And um, so, as Stephen said, we are going to be back to campus. Um, we're actually already back on campus this September. So we had our first group in yesterday and we're expecting more groups in this weekend. So all going well, we will be um, running this full uh, diploma on campus uh, in Black Rock. So it's going to be great to see all our participants back. Um, so what, as I say, what I'm going to do is I am going to send out full details by email after this webinar. And if any of you want to speak to me directly, um, I would be delighted to help you. I suppose last thing to say, actually, is that we take 30 people on this course and um, I have seven places remaining. So if you are interested, uh, just get back to me as soon as possible and I can hold you a spot while you make your decision. All right. Look, thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Um, I will let you go to uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Um, and just lastly, thanks so much to David and Christine for joining us this morning and giving up your time. And thank you, Stephen, for hosting it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.